Just me for now. <laughs> so we're all going to talk, and then uh, and then we, we'll take questions at the end. Um, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate that you came out in the cold. Um, so first, I always feel, I, last two nights I felt obliged to ex explain my clothes. I'm usually in more formal stuff, but they told me we're going to do this long walk, and it's really cold in New Hampshire, and turns out we did. It was a 18.8 mile walk today uh, from Concord to New Hampshire. But you guys oversold the cold and undersold the walk. <laughs> the walk was brutal. <laughs> I mean, you guys should do it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready for the 19 miles, but we did it. We did it together. And we're going to do all of this, the reform together, and Governor Buddy Romer is going to walk tomorrow. Congressman Sarbanes, who's a real... Uh, fighter and a hero for us in Congress walked today in the morning. Uh, it was a great conversation with him. So uh, I want to tell you uh, who I am for those of you who don't know me and why I'm here, okay? So um, I, yes, I worked on MSNBC. I had the six o'clock show there. I worked on Current TV. That was Al Gore station. Uh, but mainly our show is online. We've been online before I was on TV. We're online afterwards. Uh, as you can tell, I'm glad I brought a Young Turk shirt. I, I not my ACDC shirt, but so um, we, we, because this is a kind of an obnoxious shirt, but we did it for our billion view party. Um, and we're at one and a half billion views overall online, 55 million views uh, a month. Um, so when I was on MSNBC, I got about 700,000 viewers a night. Online, we get 2 million viewers a night. Thank you. So... Uh, I'm the host of the show. I'm the CEO of the TYT Network, which is 38 channels. You should check every single one of them out. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I'm, uh, in this context, more importantly, the founder of Wolfpack. And so why in the world did I form a super PAC to fight against all the other super PACs? Was it because I wasn't busy enough? <laughs> No. So a TV show, an online show at the time, and, and, uh, and, uh, and running the network kept me plenty, plenty busy. Um, no, I did it, and somebody asked me today, one of the film crews uh, that we were filming on the walk, um, they said, well, it's such a long odds, and you've all got all this other stuff to do. Why'd you do it? I did it because I had to do it. I had to do it. Because uh, what a lot of people don't recognize is that our democracy is lost. It's not, hey, if we keep going in that direction, we're going to lose it. No, it's already gone. Uh, the donors are the ones that count. They're the ones that are represented. You all are not represented at all. I got bad news for you, okay? The good news is on the state level, you are. And I'm going to get back to that in a minute, okay, because that's really important. But at the national level, they don't give a damn what you think. I mean, you give me any issue and I'll prove it to you. Uh, gun control. Okay, so a lot of people are split on gun control. But on federal background checks, we're not split at all. 93% of Americans are in favor of federal background checks. Did we get it? Nope. Because they're not representing you. They're representing the donors. And the NRA is backed by the gun manufacturers, gun users, NRA supporters, overwhelmingly favored federal background checks. Did you know that? that 70, 80 percent of NRA members back federal background checks. Nobody gives a damn. The only people they care about is the donors. In that case, it's the gun manufacturers. Social Security, they say, poll after poll, my 84 percent say, under no circumstances should you cut Social Security. I don't care what you have to do. Do not cut it. Is, are we clear enough? Well, President Obama proposes cutting it. The Republicans love it. Luckily, they haven't reached a deal yet, okay? But they can't wait to do it. Now, in a democracy, if 84% of the people say don't do that under any circumstance, would their representatives be considering doing it? Of course not. But we don't live in a democracy. We are, live in a republic lost, okay? It's already gone. So I, I remember uh, I was at one of these gatherings of constitutional law professors because I was trying to figure out how to solve it. Every single issue I do on the show comes back to, sorry, the guys with more money won, okay? And usually that's sorry because I'm a progressive. Progressives lose most of those issues. We don't lose all those issues. Uh, for example, we went on gay rights, 
and because we have more money on gay rights than they do. So all the conservatives who think, ha-ha, you know, we, we win on whatever they think they're winning on. Like, I don't know why they think they're winning when we give away $5 billion a year to oil companies and oil subsidies. How did you win, schmuck, right? You didn't win. We all lost. The companies won, right? Corporations that have basically stolen our government have won, right? Uh, but on, so conservatives, sad day for you, man. You're never, ever, 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 ever going to win on gay rights because we got more money. And money's the only thing that talks on every single issue. I could prove it to you. I do it night in, night out. Now, like they're all those idiot pundits on TV, I used to be among them, um, <laughs> who are like, oh, gee, I wonder which way this one's going to go. <laughs> really? I think I'm batting a thousand. <laughs> I can tell you which way each issue is going to go by just telling you who's got more money. And for example, immigration. Oh, so I'll do it ahead of time. And then when it happens, you'll say, oh, yeah, he said that, right? So are we going to get immigration reform? We actually are. Now, whether it's going to be good immigration reform is a different question. But so now Republicans want to make sure that they get the Latino vote. Democrats, of course, want to say, hey, we did something for you Latinos. But that's not why. The Chamber of Commerce came out in favor of it. Uh, end of the conversation, it's over. We're going to get immigration reform. But the, one, the kind of immigration reform we're going to get is the kind the chamber wants, with a lot of cheap labor, OK? And are they going to get a pathway to citizenship? Well, the chamber doesn't really care about that that much. They just want the cheap labor, right? So it'll be something along those lines, and they might not even get a pathway to citizenship. And the Democrats will go, oh, oh my god, Obama, he's classic Obama. Oh, the Republicans made me do it. Oh, my god, I can't believe it, right? Uh, no, the <laughs> chamber controls both parties, both parties. So, I, I'm, you know, we're in the disaster. We're in the disaster, okay? And we got to find a way out of it. Because if you don't try to find a way out of it, then you're saying, yeah, we lost our democracy and that's it. Now we live in a government run by the rich and the powerful and, generally speaking, multinational corporations. And I'm comfortable with that. I'm a serf in that system. And I bow my head. So are you going to bow your head? Now, look, I, there's a favorite chart of mine. It's not up here tonight. But it shows productivity and hourly wage for the average American worker, right? So the good news is actually from 1945 to about 1978, 1980, right in that ballpark, uh, productivity is going up and wages are going up. Same exact line. They're almost identical, right? So when they tell you like, oh, well, you know, liberals are like herding cats and, you know, liberals are no good. They can't get anything done anyway. Yada, yada. Bullshit. Okay. Here's what liberals did between 1945 and 1980. They crushed everything in their path. They were super strong. They got Richard Nixon to pass the EPA and OSHA. Ralph Nader broke Nixon's back and drank his spinal fluid. Okay. <laughs> liberals are weak. My ass, did FDR look weak to you? No, we had a golden time when, we, when the multinational corporations did not run the government. Okay, And look, I'm going to talk a lot about corporations in this context. Understand something. I'm not against corporations. So I have a small business. It's an LLC. We're the Young Turks LLC. We're a corporation. There's a reason you need corporations. It's limited liability. It makes sense. Okay, That's one thing. It's another thing to say, hey, this legal fiction that we have created, this robot, this machine, this amoral machine, go ahead and run our government, okay? So corporations are not immoral, they're not evil, that's silly talk, right? They're amoral, they're, it, it's not in their DNA, I know, because we wrote their DNA. We're the guys who created these machines. We said, here's a legal fiction, your job is to maximize every red cent, and if you don't, you will be fired, okay? And another guy will come in, and he'll crush whatever he has to crush in his path to make sure he maximizes every red cent. It's one thing for those corporations to exist. It's one thing to build a robot like that. It's another thing to say, oh, by the way, later, you can go ahead and bribe all the politicians legally, and they'll work for you. And they won't represent the American people. They'll represent you. That's mental. That's ridiculous. And that's the current state of America. And I can tell you exactly what two decisions did that, and it wasn't Citizens United. Citizens United shot a dead horse, okay? It was in 1976, Buckley v. Vallejo, they said money equals speech. 1978, they said Bilotti, well, corporations we already decided were human beings. <laughs> Pause there for a second. Uh, raise your hand if you think a corporation is a human being. 
Let the record note that Mitt Romney was not in the room and no one raised their hand. Okay. I mean, think about that. Isn't that insanity? A human being with inalienable rights endowed by their creator? We're their creator. We didn't endow them with inalienable rights. The Supreme Court did that. Lewis Powell writes a memo in 1971 for the Chamber of Commerce, says, hey, wouldn't it be great if we took over all parts of the government and we did propaganda in the schools and in the media and we took over the legislative body in the Supreme Court? And Nixon says, yeah, that would be great. How'd you like to be on the Supreme Court? And Lewis Powell's the deciding vote in Buckley v. Vallejo and in 1978, Bilotti. And in Bilotti, they say, corporations, since they're human beings, have First Amendment rights, and since we already decided First Amendment rights means you can spend unlimited money in politics, have at it, Hoss. And when I talked to Ralph Nader, which I've interviewed him several times and yelled at him a couple of times over some of the elections he participated in, um, I asked him, what happened? I mean, you're running roughshod, right? Nixon's like cowering in the Oval Office looking at you. And then all of a sudden, you run into a brick wall. What happened? He said, uh, Tony Co Coelho happened. Who the hell is Tony Coelho? He's a Democratic congressman from back then. And uh, what he did was, as soon as those decisions happened, he went over to the rest of the Democrats and said, hey, guys, it turns out we can take corporate money, too. And that was that. And then you know what happens to that graph from 1978 on? Productivity continues to skyrocket, OK? Congratulations, American workers. You did a great job, OK? Wages, boom, flatline. That difference between wages and productivity is the money you earned but never got. For decades, they've been robbing you blind because they have to. It's in their DNA. We told them to rob you. And then the Supreme Court said, go ahead, buy the politician. Now, if you buy a politician and you pay them, there was a great quote by one of the guys who got caught up in the Keating scandal. It was, in fact, it was Keating himself. They said, hey, when you uh, bribed all these uh, politicians, did you expect to get something back? He said, yeah, why else would I bribe them? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course I expected something back. But we turn that bribery now into legalized bribery. So they write him a check. And these congressmen and these senators, say, they, you know that they spend about 60% of their time? Isn't that unbelievable? 60% of their time calling, say, oh, can you give me a legal bribe? Can you give me a legal bribe? Can, please, 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 pretty please. I swear I'll listen to you and you only. I swear I won't give a damn about my voters. And all I'll do is listen to you and suck up to you, right? We, we were talking to a Congressman uh, Sarbanes this morning, like I said. Now, he's a great guy. He does not take super PAC money. I don't know how he gets elected. <laughs> Bless his heart, OK? And, and he's trying to fight back. And he's got a bill that you should really look up in Congress uh, to make that happen. And so. Uh, I said, so, hey, do you ever hang out with the other congressmen, Republican or Democrats, go to lunch or something? He said, are you kidding me? Nobody's got time for lunch. If they see you at lunch, they'll pull you out and say, you got to go make calls. These guys are dialing for dollars every single day, day in, day out. So do you think they're representing, did they call you? Have you gotten a call recently? I didn't get a call, right? Now you got a lot of money, you're going to get a call, okay? And you think they're not listening to those people? Remember, they got to run in two years. They got to go back to that guy and say, hey, remember how I delivered for you and didn't give a damn about my voters? And I did whatever you told me to do? Well, give me money again, OK? They have to raise, I think it was Tom Daschle said, $10,000 a day to get reelected. 10000 a day, OK? You know what this is called? Taxation without representation. So when my conservative friends across the country say, hey, you know, I, I don't like taxes, and I don't like big government. I say, I hear you, brother. Now, I would like taxes if it went to my cops and to the firemen. I don't want my house to burn down, OK? It went to teachers. I want my kids to get a good public education. I got a great public education way back in yesteryear, right? Uh, but that's not what it's going to. It's going to oil subsidies. It's going to corporate jet subsidies. It's going to farm subsidies. It's going to the Pacific Trade uh, tr Trans-Pacific Partnership, I should say. It's going to all these different things that are not for our benefit, it's for their benefit. I mean, think about it. Mitt Romney has the gall to run for president. Guy paid 12.9% in the years that he knew he was going to run for president. Imagine what he paid before that. He pays less than 13%. We pay more than that. Why? Because if the rich are the ones that are setting the rules, guess who they're going to set them in favor of? The rich. Again, there's nothing wrong with the rich. 
I, I, I like Oprah. I, I like my dentist. I like my doctor, okay? There's nothing wrong with the rich. But if you say to the rich, you get special privileges, you get to set the rules on your, in your favor, and your secretary will pay 25%, but you'll pay 12%, well, that ain't right. That's not fair. That's not democracy. So that's why I formed Wolfpack. And I named it Wolfpack because I wanted to know we're tired of it, OK? And we're going to be aggressive. And we're going to come after you. So if you don't like it, that's a sad day for you, OK? So there is a way to do this. Now, the most important thing, and Professor Leslie will tell you a lot more about this, is apathy, OK? And people say, oh, I, you're right, okay, you're right, you know, it's money in politics, taxation without representation, but there's nothing we can do. That is the great lie they feed you so that you don't do anything, okay? Because if you got together, couldn't we all, we're an overwhelming majority of the country, including Republicans, including Libertarians, couldn't we beat them combined? Of course we could. Of course, look, the example I use is the suffragist movement. Now, how in the world did they get the right to vote when they couldn't vote in the first place, right? It's incredibly hard. Now, the movement overall took 70 years, but from their first march, okay, in Washington, they did a march on Washington, so this stuff's not new, okay, they did it back in 1913. It took seven years for them to get their men, okay? So sometimes it's a long fight, and sometimes when you actually get more active and you're in the streets, it goes a little quicker, okay? So, of course, it's possible. So, now, last thing on how we do it, okay, and this is incredibly important. Actually, you guys are a critical part of this. So uh, there's two elements to our uh, uh, amendment. One is uh, to end corporate personhood. The other is public financing of elections, OK? Because they work for the people who pay them. If we pay them, they'll work for us. But if they have to go get money from other people, then they'll work for those people and not us, OK? So as I've explained, I think those two parts are critical. So how do we get that amendment, right? Well, there's two ways to get an amendment. It's in the Constitution. One is through Congress. Unfortunately, Congress is so corrupt. It's, it's a virus in the system, and it has taken over the whole body of Washington, the whole body of government, okay? So how do you deal with that virus? You have to write a new code in. One more line of code, and that's this amendment, okay? It's the 20th Amendment. And by the way, every generation of Americans has passed an amendment, except one, us, okay? We're all sitting at home. The, the suffragists marched. You know, obviously, we had a whole civil war to get the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. Mike Minetta is here. He's the director of organizing for Wolfpack. You should definitely talk to him afterwards. He needs your help in New Hampshire. I'll tell you more about that in one second. But, you know, we were just, uh, or before the walk started, we were in one of the halls, government halls, and we saw the New Hampshire banners from the wars, from the Civil War, et cetera. And they're tattered, and, and we were thinking of all the guys who died to protect those flags, right? They picked up bayonets and bayoneted one another, right? You can't pick, pick up the phone and make a phone call to your state rep or senator. So I'm going to tell you exactly why that makes such a big difference. So Congress is corrupt. The virus is complete. Uh, so two-thirds of Congress is never going to agree to that. We couldn't get 60 votes on the Disclose Act. Disclose Act is just tell us who's bribing you. Okay, let, Keep taking the bribes. Just tell us who's bribing you, right? And first time around, we got 59 votes. The Republicans filibustered it. Uh, second time around, we got 53 votes. We lost votes. We lost momentum, right? They're gone. They're gone. They're useless, okay? That's my opinion. A lot of people have good opinions otherwise. Okay, but there is a second way, and that is Article 5 of the Constitution says you can call for a convention of the states to propose amendments, okay? Now, our founding fathers were absolute geniuses. They knew for a fact that w one day uh, federal government would get too corrupt and that you would need the states to rescue us, okay? Now, again, something our conservative brothers should agree with, okay, states' rights. This is the most important state right, to say you're doing it wrong and we're going to fix it. Thank you. Um, so you go to the state level. If you get 34 states to say we are going to call for a convention, you propose amendments at that convention, and then 38 states have to ratify it. You don't need Washington at all. You don't need them. This is an end run around Washington, OK? And look, at a convention, a million things can be proposed, although that's not really true. They're limited conventions, and they're about what the states actually say that they're about, OK? But let's say they propose three, five. I, I mean, in my ideal world, they would only propose our amendment, right? 
But you have to ratify with 38 of the states. Do you know what's the one thing that we all agree on? Is it being pro-life or pro-choice? No, we don't all agree on that. You can name any issue and we don't all agree on it. The one issue we agree on is that our politicians are bought and money has corrupted politics. We call it money in politics, conservatives call it crony capitalism, and they're right about that, that's exactly what it is. Okay, the one issue that can get 38 states of the, the 38 states in the, here to ratify is getting money out of politics, okay? So there is a way to do that. Now, for example, here finally in New Hampshire, HCR 10 is already proposed. So New Hampshire could actually be the first state in the union to call for a convention. Uh, Representative Tim Smith has called for one, and you can back him up. So if you want to know how to help, instead of you know, saying, oh, gosh, oh, well, look, all these terrible things, you actually just make three calls. That, that'll do it. Look, here, just do this experiment with me, okay? If everybody in this room, shoot, if half the people in this room make those three calls, and you can get it from Mike or me, I'll give you the pamphlets afterwards, okay? The three people you have to call. We already know it. You don't have to guess, okay? You make those three calls, and I will guarantee you that that passes in New Hampshire. And then New Hampshire will lead another revolution, okay? And this time, it's to get our democracy back. It is possible. It's going to be done through the states, and you and I are going to do it together. Okay, now, finally, uh, before uh, uh, Buddy Romer and Professor Lessig come up here, I, I got to tell you that uh, this idea that Professor Lessig has here is brilliant. Look, you, you, we talk about New Hampshire, and we're up here, and we did the 19 miles, et cetera, because it's really important. You guys are, in a sense, lucky, right? You live in the one state that people care most about politically. It's kind of neat, right? I wish I lived in that state. Not on a day like this, because I live in California, but, <laughs> um, but in California, they, pff, nobody cares. I mean, in order to get elected senator in California, I mean, you have to spend tens of millions of dollars. Nobody's coming by and say, hey, hey you in Los Angeles, what do you think? They don't give a damn what we think. But they do care what you think, OK? Because all the presidential candidates have to come through here. They have to literally come through this exact building, right? And so you all get to ask them, hey, what do you think about the corruption in Washington, and what are you going to do about it, okay? That's why I walk 19 miles and my calves are pounding and I'm all cramped up, because it's a great idea by Professor Lessig. And when you hear the ideas tonight and whenever you hear about them, they're all good, but you've got to pick one and you've got to fight, okay? If you don't fight back, it's no longer our government. And from what I understand in New Hampshire, you all are not in favor of that, okay? I believe the motto is live free or die, right? So thank God we don't have to pick up a bayonet, but let's pick up a phone and let's make it happen. Let's fight back against the machines and get our government back. Thank you.